Now comes the fun part. We're going to write our build file for both our iOS and Android app. We'll start with the iOS app first. We're going to break down our app into several different targets. One target will encapsulate the iOS app itself, whereas the other target will encompass all the Swift code. The iOS application target will depend on the Swift library. Each of these targets contains three different types of attributes. The sources attributes are files consumed by the rules and outputs source files. The depths attribute is a list of separate compiled modules that produce header files, symbols, libraries, and data. Finally, the data attribute is for data files needed for the target such as the XC assets file. You can also designate the visibility of a target using the visibility attribute. That is, you can set the target as public, which means that anyone can access it. You can also set it as private, which means only targets in the package can use that target. You can also set visibility according to specific packages and sub-packages, as well as a package group. For more information, see the visibility documentation. With all that said, let's write ourselves a build file. To get started, create a build file in the Bullseye iOS directory. Remember, a build file is just a text file. We're going to import the iOS and Swift rules. We're going to expose the iOS application and Swift library symbols. We'll start with the Swift library. First, we give it the name Sources. Next, we'll get all the source files. For this, we'll use a glob function. Remember, the glob function returns files that match certain patterns. In this case, we'll get all of the Swift files. Finally, we'll set the visibility to private. Okay, we created a Swift library. Now it's time to create an iOS application that will depend on that Swift library. First, we'll create the iOS application. We'll give it the name, Your First App. Next, we'll pass in our Swift library target to the depths attribute. Then we'll pass in our bundle identifier. After which, we'll define the device families, which is the iPhone and iPad. Then we'll pass in our info plist. After which we'll add all the assets to our assets catalog. Then we'll add the minimum OS version, which is 14. Finally, we'll add the visibility, which is public. And that's it. We've defined ourselves two build targets, one for the Swift library and the other for the iOS application. Now in the terminal, we can build our iOS app. And with that, we have compiled our app. Now to run it. We can actually do that with the following command. And we get our simulator up and running. Well done.